Hi, I'm Hoodie here, and today we're back in New Dwarf City taking care of the odd jobs and little projects that I wanted to get done before moving on to the next big project. The first thing we had to take care of was the trash problem. The humans had left a lot of it when we defeated them in the battle, but we were also dealing with quite an accumulation of discarded clothes on the residential floor ourselves. In both cases, the trash was collected and dumped in the nearest Atom Smasher, where it was blasted out of existence. On the last video, some people were curious why I wasn't melting down the armor to get the metal, and the reason was, and still is, that the smelter is further away than the Atom Smasher, and I'm lazy. Also, I have plenty of metal, but mostly the lazy thing. The second thing we had to do was build a trap hallway for invaders to enter the fortress through, so that I hopefully wouldn't have to deal with sieges anymore. I couldn't just pick one type of trap for the trap hallway though, and so it was turned into a veritable buffet of death. Don't want to get stabbed by a spear and bleed out? Walk another couple of meters and you can get a rock to fall on you and put you out of your misery. This plan was all well and good, but it turns out that without the ability to set civilian alerts, dwarves want to take the hallway as an exit just as much, if not more, than any invaders want to take it as an entrance. Which became obvious when the humans returned one year after our last kerfuffle, looking to fight again, and my dwarves kept running around in the hallway like chickens with their heads cut off. When the trap hallway turned out to be a bigger liability than asset, I locked off access to it, and sent the peasant army to fight the invaders the old-fashioned way. The downside of all the fighting was that it undid all the progress I had made on item 1 of my to-do list, and so, once the invaders were scattered, I returned once again to throwing out their trash. With the trash compacted and the trap hallway awaiting an update to the game, I moved on to the third job on my to-do list, resetting the labyrinth. We filled it back up with cages, linked those cages to the release lever, and this time made very sure that the bridges between each section were raised as we were leaving. The setup was pretty similar to last time, with coyotes in the north, humans in the east, and goblins in the west, but since last time, we had picked up a cyclops and an elf, so the cyclops was placed into the room with the most valuable artifact, the divine metal whip, to act as a sort of final boss, and the elf was locked away all alone in the southern section. With all the cages in place, I crossed my fingers and told my dwarves to flip the release lever, and was relieved when all of the prisoners were released into their own little sections perfectly set up for a future adventurer. The fourth thing I wanted to do was to build a museum to document the fort's history in real time as it progressed. I filled the main rooms with pedestals to hold all the artifacts that weren't out on loan in a guild hall or temple, and then turned the side rooms into exhibits documenting important events, like the creation of the labyrinth or the massive battle we had against the humans. At the center of these exhibit rooms, I engraved an image meant to represent each exhibit, in the battle room, it was an image of Risen striking down a human and contemplating, showcasing her unsatisfactory improvement on the battlefield. And in the labyrinth room, it was an image of a confused cyclops surrounded by a puzzle box. Because I had trapped a cyclops in a puzzle. Into these exhibits, I also placed statues of figures relevant to the history of that room. For the labyrinth room, that meant a statue of each type of creature contained within it. And for the battle room, that meant statues of the militia captains Risen, Unib, and Bomrek. I also included gravestones for the four lost soldiers and stolen human armor in the battle exhibit to make it a little more interesting. With that, the museum was caught up on all the major events the fortress had gone through thus far, and was ready to document any new major events that might happen in the future. The final thing I wanted to do before declaring New Dwarf City project ready was to expand the cemetery. This one had only become necessary over the course of doing all the other tasks in this video. With so many dwarves having died between the goblin siege at the end of the labyrinth video, and the trap hallway in this one, and with my propensity for atom smashing everything on the battlefield, we hadn't been able to bury or memorialize each dwarf at the time of their death, and had instead resorted to carving them a gravestone whenever they came back as a ghost. Just over the course of doing these odd jobs in this video, I had put 9 ghosts to rest, and that meant that the cemetery had become quite full. After some digging, some smoothing, and some quick coffin and gravestone rearranging, the cemetery was ready to welcome all the dead dwarves I could throw at it. Which will probably be a lot, because this is still only the beginning for New Dwarf City. And now that the odd jobs and little projects have been completed, New Dwarf City is once again project ready, which means I've got to get back to it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.